Welcome back from the break. Council, are we ready to continue the proceedings? We are. You may please proceed. Yes, we Thank are, you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Witness. I hope you had a good lunch. Thank you, yes, ma. Are you ready to proceed? Um, exactly. You're still reminded that you're on the oath? Okay. During um, your previous testimony, you mentioned the burial of the November 11th uh, victims. Is that correct? Yes, it is correct. You mentioned that um, when the bodies were brought and prior to the burial, actually, you went back to your office. Exactly. Can you just tell us what happened after you went back to your office? Um, while in my office, um, not um, quite too long, one of my um, provosts, that is the regimental police, um, came to me. The regimental police um, is late now, may he so rest in perfect peace, that is um, Kopul Fafajob. Um, came to me and said to me that, um, Sir, um, RSM Gomez said you can provide him with men. Can you tell us who um, RSM Gomez was? Give us his um, full name, please. RSM Gomez is uh, Paul Gomez. Um, he was the Army RSM at the time, assigned. Um, um, in, uh, in fact, deployed in Banjun, that is at the main headquarters. Was he known by any other name? Um, he is commonly known as uh, Papu. Please proceed. Well, when this um, RP came into uh, to my office and then told me that um, RSM uh, Gomez Papu said you provide more men, um, for the burial, I mean, in my office, I, 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 I told him go to the QRF sergeant and um, tell him to provide men for whatever uh, baby for the burial. So the RP left because, like I said, during that uh, mood, I was completely, uh, I was in a very terrible situation. So the RP left. And I did not, I could not see him again. He did not come back again to tell me whether he has relayed the message to the QRF sergeant or not. So this is where uh, the whole thing ends. So immediately from there, I was in the office. So I said to myself, um, since um, uh, the, all the men have gone to that place there, and then I've been the RSM, let me also go and then see um, what was um, happening there. So where did you go to? I went towards the cook house end. So immediately upon arrival there, and he Fafa Job saw me, then he came to me and then spoke to me in uh, Wolof, that, uh, sir, uh, can you go see QRFB? Meaning that um, there was nobody in the QRF block, and that is unusual. So I myself noticed when I was going there, because when I peep, because from my office, if you come out of my office, you turn left, you know, between the guard room and the next block is the QRF block. So I noticed that the QRF was virtually empty. I could only, you know, saw so only few people. That is one Sergeant Cisse, if I say it was, he was a former, you know, TSG. He had a hand problem. So he was the one I saw there with some, you know, soldiers, very few soldiers not knowing that everybody, you know, had gone towards the cookhouse. So immediately when I arrived there, you know, he approached me and told me, sir, ah, fair kuma ken si So chila kone, fate lolo, fate ko. So I told him, just forget it. So that was all. Can you please proceed? What happened yes. next? So upon my arrival there, RSM did not tell me anything. He did not tell me anything. And then the condition in which I found the soldiers was devastating because it's like their morals were down. Morals were down. Very sad, 
you know, in a very quiet, you know, mood. All right. Um, but then the burial was on. The, f the second thing that I noticed was, you know, the oddlies to the council where they went doing the burial. One, you know, they all had their rifles, you know, slung behind. Like you get your rifle and then you sling it, the rifle being behind and then the sling um, in front. Uh, uh, and they were doing the burial. Some of them, they had their headdresses under their solar uh, flips. Uh, and the, the, the burial was on. Can you <coughs> give us the names of the oddlies who were doing the burials? Good. JCB was there. Um, Fati, Lamin Fati. JCB who? JCB Mendy. What was his rank? JCB Mendy, I think he's a private soldier. And who JCB else? Mendy was there. Batch Samba was there. That is uh, Lance Corporal Batch Samba, the driver, was there. In fact, he was using uh, uh, dark glasses. And then even JCB also was uh, wearing dark glasses. Uh, you know, Lamin Fati was there. You know, I could see even Koli. Kobul Koli there. What's his first name? Um, Lamin Koli. Uh, Lamin Koli. Lamin Koli. Um, Who was Lamin Koli? He was, um, I think he's a corporal, uh, a medic, sort of. Uh, he's a medic. He's a medic. Um, Lamin Fati was there. Uh, What's his rank? Lamin Fati. Lamin Fati. Then he was, um, if I'm not mistaken, he was a sergeant, Eli Corporal or a sergeant, I mean, Fatih. He's now the twice in the Union Barracks. And then uh, uh, people like um, Suso, but Suso, I've seen Suso, I don't know um, uh, who's oddly he was. But Alfred Suso was there, you know. Uh, uh, what was his you know, rank? Uh, mm, Actually, you see, some some of these guys, they don't wear their ranks. You know, they don't wear their ranks. Those days. Okay. So. Um, Do you know one Esa Mendy? Esa Mendy. Esa he was there. Yes. Mendy. Yes. He was there. He was there. Do you know his rank? No, I I, I can't remember his rank. Then uh, Babanjai was there. They were, they were if, and then also RSM Gomez. That is RSM Gomez was also there. So obviously, you know, they were, they were, they were the, the one doing the burial. Can you tell us what RSM Gomez was doing? Virtually, RSM Gomez was the one. Um, who was with these guys, with these oddlies? Because if you look at it, Yundum Barracks was under me as the RSM because you can only have an RSM, one RSM at a time in the camp. So RSM Gomez came, you know, to Yundum uh, under what, you know, instructions, definitely I don't know. I only saw him, you know, working with uh, these. Um, you know, at least to the council, and then also coordinating with um, whatever movement it was, it was, was going on. And then, um, what was he doing at the burial site, RSM Gomez? He was actually, you know, talk, I mean, telling these people to, you know, do the the, the, the burial because I could remember. Um, Bach Samba Jalo um, saying that, you know, I think the thing was, the process was slow. The process was slow. And then he was saying in Mandinka that Alka Manya Dila, Alka Malakum Musul, Altaria, Mantai Musur. Meaning that how are you behaving? You are behaving like uh, women. You know, hurry up because we don't have time. So you can say he was supervising the burial? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. 
So for me, actually, when I saw that, and then knowing fully well uh, that um, um, my QRF, it is unusual to, for the men to abandon the QRF because like, they are always on standby for any movement. So that was the time when I noticed that the QRF was empty, virtually empty. I you know, started to you know, instruct my RPs to get the men out, you know, to, for them to go back to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the QRF lock. You mentioned one Esa Mende. You mentioned that you knew him. Um, did he have any other names by which he was called? Uh, Men, no, Mendy, Mendy. Do you know if he was referred to as Churo? Uh, is the word I... Who else? Okay. No, do you know the phrase Churo? Churo. That's the question, yes. No, hope you are not mixing. Because I think um, Churo is either... No, Churo was also there. Yes, Churo. Who was Churo? Churo was an uh, oddly to um, Edward um, Singati, Captain Edward Singati, I think. Do you know his name? That must have been a nickname. Do you know his proper name? Uh, is it Ture? But he's quite widely known as uh, Churo, for me, definitely. Yes. Does Mustafa Ture ring a bell? Good. Good. Is that his name? Yes. Uh, yes. That yes. is Churo. Uh, yeah. So, so it is correct that both Esa Mendi and Churo were there mm. at the burial site. Yes. And then also plus uh, one um, Albert. Albert Mendi. But he's late now. What was I his think rank? Corporal, Corporal Albert, Albert Mendi. They were also uh, there. So coupled with um, a lot of people, you know, you know, those days like like I said, you have the TSG, TSG personnel and then the uh, GNA box together. And um, I mean, you could see the, the number, you know, down there. So, and then also like, um, it's, it was very difficult to, 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 to know the actual people that were there. So it is correct that you never provided any men for the burial? I would never provide it. Because when I noticed that the QRF was empty, and then by, you know, um, confronted by a um, couple of Fafajub, who told me that, sir, Kiara of Kennekofa, so Chila Kone Baiko, Fateko. So, in fact, that was the, you know, the end of the story. Just give us a translation of that, please. Kiara of Kennekofa, Kennekofa, meaning that in the Kiara there was nobody. What would you say to the suggestion that um, you were the one who provided the, the men for the burial and also supervised the actual burial? You see, let me make um, things very clear here. One being, as far as the CEO is concerned and I were concerned, was never taxed to take part in that activity. One being, I made it very clear that the CEO gave me instructions to continue the preparation for the Remembrance Sunday. It is only few elements from one being who defected by breaking barracks to join them and involve themselves in an act. This is why when I came and then I found them in that mood very somber mood, I mean, very sad mood. I decided to send them back to the QR because they, that's where they're supposed to be. So you can see the people who, you know, act, were taking part in the, in the burial were members from the, the, the council and come back again. How can I, RSM Sanyang, in 1994, coordinate a job that was being, taken, being done by Lance Couples private soldiers when Sergeant Majors staff sergeants and sergeants are standing watching. Which army is that? Is it a kangaroo army? I cannot participate in, you know, supervising a job when I have my senior interests standing watching me doing it. I would have preferred for them to do it 
than myself. Like I made it very clear when the CEO gave me the instructions that they said we have to continue our preparation for the remember on Sunday. What I did was I called my senior interns and then told them that look, we are to continue the preparation for the remember on Sunday. It was there that I knew that um, some of our men who were issued with uniforms were deployed out. Then I told them, get, the, uh, get ways and means of getting them back. Um, Madam Council, you see, I will tell you, if it was not these dead bodies, that blows the wave of confusion in that barracks to a high height. I was going to sit in my office, and a senior intro will march and halt before me and tell me that, sir, the men are set for the rehearsal. But because of this presence of uh, the, 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 the dead bodies that attracted the, you know, activities and then everybody found himself down there, that the senior insert could not um, come back to report for me. So if I was responsible of that activity, people were going to see a total, you know, command and control system in place. Because it will not be like, like that. I cannot be supervising or coordinating when sergeant majors, staff sergeants, sergeants are standing watching. Would that not also apply to RSM Gomez at the time? Because he was the one supervising the well, burials. For that one, you are talking about RSM Gomez. We are talking about RSM Sanyang. The way I do things and the way probably somebody does things is quite different. Members of the Gambian forces are watching me. They know who R R RSM Sanyang was. The way I do things is totally quite different from uh, others. I mean, even the sister services, they know who RSM Sanya was, and they know who Lefranc Colonel Sanya is. So you are denying that you actually took... It is, not, it is practically impossible, ma'am. It's not possible. Um, you mentioned um, soldiers that defected. Can you provide more details um, to us of those who defected? One, Kanye was directly under me. Kanye. He was directly, Alaji Kanye. He was directly under me, well before uh, the 11-11. But where he got the instructions, and then who allowed me to allow him to, you know, embark on uh, whatever activity he was doing, I don't know. It would have been better for him to say, well, it was RSM Sanyang who asked me to be in uniform, to go and draw my rifle, and then do this. Can, you, can we just go back to the burial? Do you know how the burial was conducted? What actually happened? How did they bury these bodies? Like I said, um, how the burial was conducted and how they got the bodies into the hole it was um, never my present in my presence sorry um, i only went there when i found the process was at the tail end of it yeah. did you witness the digging of the um, burial site or the graves thank you very much for this question let me make things very clear here. You see this, those ditches. I, Lieutenant Colonel Sanyang, Staff Sergeant Sanyang, at that time, Bravo Company, I participated indirectly in the digging of those ditches. That was well before 1994. We, nobody thought that 1994 will ever take place. What happened was that during those days, during the Nigerian time, we had serious problems with regards to toilet facilities in Union Barracks. To an extent, one, soldiers were using primary school toilets. You know, primary, the, the, uh, Union Primary School was, used to be just behind the camp. Two, you either go to the married quarters or you enter the lime, lime orchard. So now the command at that time did it necessary for us to come up with um, local latrines, toilets. Remember, we had two companies at, the time, at, at that time, Alpha and Bravo Company. So well, they said, okay, both these companies must create its own toilet. 
So because of these two companies on the ground, I was a staff sergeant at that time, a staff sergeant and an appointed company quartermaster sergeant responsible for logistics and then stores. What do, uh, was happening at uh, that time was that the stores were was, was centralized under um, W02, W02 um, Kankakan, Greg. So what used to happen is that uh, for me, that time, we will go to Greg, sign out these digging tools, bring them to our, to our offices, and the men, let's say like my men of Bravo Company will come and then sign out the sergeants, will come and then sign out these tools from me and embark on the digging of those ditches. So when we dig those ditches, finish, now for them to be constructed into toilets, it became a problem again. Financial, in fact, everything was kaput. Nothing, no money. So this is how the, the, the ditches were left like that. I cannot determine. Maybe it took one year before. So in the end, the men started using them as dumping sites. Like they would do their cleaning, get the rubbish, and start dumping it there. But that was it when, in fact, um, they were being stopped because efforts were being made to, for the construction of those um, toilets. But uh, it, things never happened. So this is how the, those ditches were left like that until when I left Yundum to Farafenye. Other witnesses have testified that um, those ditches were dug on the day of November 11th. What do you say? Like I said, in the end, they were being used as a dumping site, and we all know what a dumping site is. Bringing rubbish, throwing them there. So, maybe by the time that they wanted to carry out the burial, they noticed that, well, <laughs> you have some rubbish inside, and they need to get those rubbish outside. So, I think it's because of that, you know, maybe people saw those actions and assumed that they were digging them fresh, but those ditches were there months before that e e episode happened. Did you witness any digging? No. Did you witness the burial of the men? Like I said, at the beginning, I wasn't there. I came in at the tail end of um, the burial. What did you witness? The oddlies, you know, putting sand on those um, ditches. So the ditches Sorry. were cut? Sorry. On that ditch, you know there are two. The other one, that is the Bravo Company, because the one on the left was Bravo. The one on the right was Alpha Company. Bravo Company one was completely, you know, covered. So it was the, they were concentrating on one. Can you just give us further details about the ditch that was already covered? Do you know what was in it? Right. Um, it was later known to me that um, that's where they buried uh, Dotfal, Lefran Dotfal, um, uh, Lefran uh, Basil Kamara, and Fafanyang. And Fafanyang. That is, if you face them towards the fence, the one on the left. Then the one on the right, that where they, they got the the, the remaining bulk of um, the officers. Can you um, then tell us what happened to the other to the other ditch? Did you witness it being buried? Yeah. Which ditch? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Which of the ditches are you talking about? The your mic, your mic, please. The open ditch. You mentioned that one ditch had already been covered and it contained the bodies of Basiru Baro yes. and Basiru Kamara yes. and Dot Fab. Yes. So the other ditch, that's the one I'm referring to. This is what I'm telling you. When they were doing the, pro the, the burial, I came at the tail end of um, the process. That's the one I was explaining, that the odd list, I found the odd list doing the burial. 
So what did you see? We just want to have an understanding of exactly what you saw. Did you see dead bodies inside? No, no, no. Had no, no, they no. already been covered? They have, they have already been covered. They have already been covered. So you came and met both ditches covered? Yes. But the, the one, this one, the one on the left, or, uh, just at the finish, sorry, on the right, they were on the finishing touches. They were in the process of covering Yeah, finishing, it. yes. Can we just go a little bit back? You mentioned the names of um, people that had defected. You mentioned one name, actually, and that was Kanye. Do you remember any other person that defected? Um, the other person I can say is um, Lamin Kole. Lamin Kole was um, seen at the at the at the burial site. So I don't know where he got the instruction from to the, to to abandon the the clinic and then um, find himself at that at, at that site. Why would you say that he defected? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, like he was with us. He was with us. You know, somebody who defects. It's from you move from this point to that point, maybe based on your own personal interest or whatever, but on no grounds. Because uh, as far as I'm concerned, movement of soldiers goes with instructions. That is to say, look, you do this. So if you move, it's like you are doing it on your own. That is maybe absenting yourself from place of duty or like uh, you break out of barracks. Because like breaking out of barracks is like the barracks everybody is within that barracks and then you decided that well okay i should not be here though then let me move out snitch to move out so obviously you will consider that somebody who broke barracks does the name buba jame mean anything to you yes buba jame buba jame yes he was the the, the profound duty that day he was the one that you met at the guard room when you were being detained. Being detained, exactly. Did was he one of the defectors? Um, well, yes, I can also classify him as somebody who defected. Because taking part in such, such an activity, definitely to me, it's like, um, as far as I'm concerned, one being was never taxed to 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 take part because this one is a purely um, state house issue that you know they were carrying out an um, emission outside and then you know doing the finishing touches in one bn was he also one of the soldiers that was responsible for detaining um officers because you met him at the guard room on that day when i met him at the guard room you know like if you enter in the guard room on the left hand side that's why i met him standing but from there, I got inside, so I don't know what he was doing whilst I was inside the cells. You know. Tell us um, what happened after the burials. After the burial, um, we have an other episode uh, where by, 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 sorry, Basiru Kamara, Corporal Basiru Kamara and EMCC were called upon from the cells, you know, and um, summarily executed. Let's just um, get things clear in terms of the sequence of events. Um, you've already mentioned in your testimony that uh, Lieutenant, that Basiru um, Kamara was already buried in one of the pits earlier on. Um, so if that is the case, can you just tell us how he came to have been killed after the burials? One, I will confirm that the killing took place. But the chronological in which um, um, uh, it happens, the time means uh, whether before the burial or oh, it was done then buried together with these people, um, that's where, you know, I, I have doubt. But it happens. The killing actually took place in Yundum. Can you just describe the killings to us before we go on to that? Good. I was in the office when they came for these people. 
and they were also naked like um, no tra no 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 jacket no trousers also only only pant where did they come for them you Pardon? said you said you were in your office when they came they came for them from the guard room to the inside the guard room and then batch was the guy uh, batch samba was the guy who in fact came and then requested them like samba jalo jalo all right so from there they have been um, escorted towards the the ante room and you were watching at this point from your office you cannot uh, from the guard room yes they when they were moved uh, move, uh, removed from the from the guard room from the guard room but as they start going it's not possible for you to see well, um, see them moving because it's like they are off site please proceed all right when they were taken out you know the same process will you know, continue you know shots were fired and actually i i saw their bodies i saw their bodies so how did you come to see their bodies because you said you were in your office and they were yes. being led away so how did that happen yes like i told you you see for me it's like um, i do move out to see exactly what is happening because an alcalo like something is taking place and you 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 are in, inside your office so i was trying to avoid a situation where you know i mean something might have happened to me so i went out to see because i have to go and then see what happened because shots were fired there were no f fire firing were happening so obviously within a blink of an eye shots were fired obviously i would go and then see ah, what happened so this is what prompted me to go and then see. So when I went, it was another you know, unfortunate situation. I mean, uh, these guys were already gone down. What did you see? What was the condition of their body? Um, lifeless bodies. Did you see the um, point of impact? See, <sighs> see. I'll tell you the truth. Um, CJ, I think uh, the shots were uh, a shot was you know uh, aimed at his on his head because you can see this part was completely open. What about Basiru Kamara? No, oh, Basiru Kamara, I didn't uh, try to get close to him. Can you, um, apart from Basiru Kamara and EMCC, the other bodies that had been buried or? perhaps before they were buried, did you see what condition their bodies were or the impact um, that anything that happened on them? The, the bodies that I saw in full were only three. That is Fafanyang and these two. The remaining bodies, like I said, were on the Land Rover. And I later confirmed that it was those officers that were taken, you know, and uh, eventually this, that, that um, situation in fact occurred. So what later happened to the bodies of Basiru Kamara at EMCC? They have been dragged to the, to the ditch and then... So this is what um, I, I cannot um, comprehend, this is I understand. Whether Do you know who dragged them? Uh, yeah. The person who dragged them. I know Lamin Koli was there. Koli, Koli was there. And then uh, um, and then also Mbub, sorry, Mbub. Mbub was there, Babu Karmbub. Yes. What was his rank? Um, I think he was a corporal. Sorry? He was a corporal. Did he participate in the killing? I cannot tell because the killing was done when I was in the office. But I you could see them around. How about the burials? The burial. Bob. No, I cannot remember seeing him, but the burial definitely, it was the oddest. Okay.
they were the ones who participated fully. Where was Mbu based? Pardon? Mbu, where was he based? Mbu um, was a military police um, personnel. I, if, I, if, I, if my memories can um, can recall, yes. Would you also say that he defected? I'm talking about one BN. One infant. You know, Yundum is the home of infantry, but along the line, you have another sub unit in Yundum called GAF Camp. And I was the RSM for one infantry battalion, the infantry. So GAF Camp is, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, a unit that consists of support elements. That's where you have medical, engineers, ban and drum, signal office, name it. But 1BN is purely the infantry battalion. So it is 1BN that I was in charge of. Who was in charge of GAF? At that time? Yes, please. Uh, the RSM, then it used to be W1, W2, Mamina Fati, but he's late. W02, Mamina Fati? Yes, he's late. Just to go through um, what you just said, um, in terms of the deaths of Basiro Kamara and AMCC, you cannot recall the sequence of events or the chronology in terms of when they happened, whether they happened before the burial or after the burial. But you have described what you witnessed and the fact that these deaths occurred. Can you tell us if they were buried and how they were buried? Like I said, I saw them drag, being dragged um, to the ditch and then they were buried. Where were they buried? That same ditch. Which same ditch? There were two ditches. Yes. Um, I think because well, I think it's in the um, the ditch on the on, on, on the left as you stand and face there. Uh, that's where they, where they were buried. But um, definitely, anyway, they were buried in, the, in that ditch, to be more precise, sort of. In what particular ditch? I you know, think there was a first ditch that you described. Yes. And the second one, the latter one. Yes. Which one are you referring to? I'm referring to the one on the right. Is that where Basiru Barrow was um, buried with Dotfal? Or the other one where all the other. Yeah, all where, where the old, old, old others were buried. I, I think so. If you can recall, if you can't recall, you can say that. I mean, you know, it's a long time, and you know, I'm just struggling trying to recap or recall what um, actually um, took place and the chronological, the way you know it came in order of um, times in terms of times. And meanwhile, let's just go back to the defectors. Um, was it normal for the GAF camp? Um, personnel to be involved in, in the burial. Was that normal? GAF camp at that particular time, I don't know what was their mission. What was their tax? I cannot tell. But for one being, our mission was to prepare for the remembrance Sunday. Were they around the camp on the day of November 11th? Oh. The GAF um, soldiers? Of course, a lot of people came just to watch. Okay, but did you, do you remember any of them participating in the burial? Um, apart from Koli, no. And Boop? You mentioned Boop. Yes, Boop, Boop, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry about that. I, I okay. beg your pardon. Which Koli are you referring to? I said Lamin Koli. Lamin Koli was from GAF? Yes. Okay. Apart from these two, you don't remember any other person from GAF? Like I said, um, 
a lot of a lot of a lot of soldiers came and for your information from that um, unfaithful you know day with the happenings of that you know incident um, there was a wave of mass you know exodus of um, or transfer of um, um, soldiers especially TSU uh, TSG guys um, who along the line some that was the very last day I saw them and some you know were transferred from the army back to the police because of you know that incident so even whereas you happen to see you know an, an, uh, a soldier down there you know because of the mere fact that from that very day you did not set an eye on him you will not be able to remember so let's just go back. Um, the burials took place, um, and what happened next after that? Well, when the burial took place, like I said, the council members who came back from from the booth, um, all the council members, sorry, to I mean, um, put the record straight. I recap, recap now, recall now. Um, the council members all came back to the to the camp, when the army commander. Can you name all of them? Oh, yes, um, Captain Sinasabali, being the vice chairman, uh, Captain Yanko Baturi, Minister of um, Local Governments and Lands, um, Captain Edward Singate, uh, Minister of Defense, Captain Sadibu Haidara, Minister of Interior, the Army Commander, um, Kwame Babu Kajata. They all came back and then. Um, Obviously, my CEO, because of the fact that he must be there, he was also seen, you know, alongside with them. But definitely for the CEO, it's like, I can't help that um, uh, things happen in that way. Was Ping, um, Peter Singhata there? Uh, Peter Singhata, yes. He was there. Sorry, yes. Peter Singhata was there. Okay. What role did he play at the There, burial? during the burial, no, 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 no. Um, he have, I don't see him participating in any um, uh, activity. What but what happened? But what happened before that? Actually, I don't know. Under what circumstances did you see him? He was in combat with his rifle. And what was he doing? Was he when was he present when anyone was killed? Was he present? What I, yes, he was there. He was in the camp. He was in the camp. Around the ante room. Did you see him participate in any event that happened on November 11th? From the day of November 11th. Actually, um, in the morning... I vividly remember now, he was on the ground, you know, but the activity that he was um, doing, you could see him moving up and down, you know, you could see him over moving. Um, let's just move on to, um, after the burial, um, the Remembrance Day parade, did it go on? Yes. Just tell me briefly what the mood was. Um, on that day. This was the Sunday after November 11th, I believe. No, November, sorry, November 11th was on a Friday. Yes, yeah, so it was the Sunday after November Sunday 11th. was on the 13th. Yeah. You know, after the episode of that November 11th, the morals of the soldiers was just under the carpet. Everybody was demoralized. Myself talking to you, it took me two days without sleeping. Seriously speaking. Then, the men, there was total, you know, uh, low morals, and come again on Saturday, I will tell you, from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it was only Marum, the CEO, Captain Marum, who was the only officer in the whole camp, one BN. And then second is the OC military police, Elephant Fraser Juf. All the other officers, 
absolutely no no they were all killed so the situation was just you know you cannot just imagine so from saturday on that saturday we started to gather the men were there but officers were not there so it was more on who was you know trying to you know get officers here and there by you know raising it um, and linking up with the headquarters and finally finally officers were provided then the parade took place on saturday so on sunday and wasn't it ironic that um, Remembrance Day was taking place just two days after November 11th, under uh, the say circumstances? Again. Say again. Under the circumstances, wasn't it ironic that Remembrance Sunday was taking place two days after November 11th, when so many soldiers had died, which was the reason for commemoration of um, Remembrance Sunday? <sighs> You see, like I said, the Remembrance Sunday, it's um, um, a parade that is mounted to remember the dead. Uh, but this one is an unfortunate um, incident that happened. And um, along the line, it coincided also with the coming up of this Remembrance, the actual Remembrance Sunday. So it's rather unfortunate, definitely. Um, let's move on from November 11th. Um, did you remain at the at the, at, at Yundum Barracks after November 11th? Yes, ma'am. And how long did you remain there? Um, I was there throughout. Um, from November 11th, November actually, I was there up till um, 1999 when I was redeployed to posted out to the army headquarters. Um, Did anything happen around the 27th uh, January 1995? Uh, good. Um, November 11, after that um, um, episode, definitely things were, you know, picking up in, in terms of normalization. Um, but there was an uh, unfortunate, you know, situation that also uh, came up. That is on the 27th of January, whilst I was in Yundum, um, the late Vincent Jatta, um, Captain Vincent Jatta was the CEO by then. I was called, that was around 2, 3 o'clock to be more precise, in the afternoon. I was called, you know, into his office. When I went there, he said, um, I was here in Banjun, but um, um, Lieutenant Fraser Juf was um, asking for me. So then I asked him, where is um, the OC military police? He said, check him in the adjutant's office. I saluted him and then I went out. So I went to the adjutant's office. There I found um, Fraser Juf seated. I paid him compliment. And then uh, he told me, okay. You are here? I said, yes. He said, anyway, you are needed in Banjo. Who was the adjutant at the time? Adjutant, I think it, you, it was uh, Sow. Um, then Captain Sow. It's okay if you don't remember. Yes. Okay. So yeah. I, met, I met him. I met him. Um, see that he said, well, I am um, needed in Banjun. I said, okay. Then he said, I, I asked him, uh, can I go now? He said, no, wait, a vehicle was coming for me. So he asked me to sit down. He not, in fact, I was not allowed to go out. He told me, okay, no, sit down. A vehicle is coming for you. So I sat down. Then within a couple of um, minutes, I saw, I mean, Sambu came in. You know, he too, when he came in, he said, okay, you are, you are needed in Banjun at the headquarters. Just the same information. And he asked him to sit down. So that's where we sat, waiting for the vehicle to come. And what happened next? Within a, within a couple of minutes, we saw two vehicles entering the barracks. Because in the adjutant's office, you know, if you are there and then you look through the, the window, towards the main gate, any vehicle that enters, you will see it. And if it turns towards the anteroom, you will obviously see it. But if 
turned towards the east, you know, see. So when these two vehicles came in and they turned, like um, heading towards the ante room, alley. So they came and then parked. Then from there, I saw um, Alaji Martin. You know, what was his rank? Alaji Martin, I think uh, he was a sergeant by then, a sergeant. But you know, they were, they were not wearing ranks. State house personnel, they don't wear ranks. So, so he was from state house, is that what you Yes, yes, yes. Was he part of Okay. Alaji Martin came down with, um, with some, some, some personnel. Then we were asked to go out by Fraser Juf, the was military police. So when we went out, I saw him talking with um, um, Alaji Martin, and then he told him, okay. So the two senators are here. So we were ordered to hand over whatever item we had in our position. Then I was having, holding my pay stick, plus um, a notebook, sort of. So we complied and then handed over those um, my, so our items. Then from there, we were asked to board. Martin all asked us to board the vehicle. So it's like we were all assuming that we are going to Banyu at the headquarters because that's what we were briefed by um, Fraser Juf. You know, if you were under arrest at this point, you mentioned you were not allowed to leave. You were asked to sit down in one place. The suspicious came when we were asked to hand over our items because if somebody is you know, going to Banjo at the headquarters on a normal route, even whereas you have you carry a bag, they will allow you to, to go along with the bag. But immediately when we came to the vehicles where the people were parked, we were asked to hand over our belongings, our items. So uh, it looks strange, but nonetheless we just kept quiet and then complied. We entered. You entered the vehicle, and what happened next? So when we entered the vehicle, you know, they also boarded the vehicle and then the who boarded the vehicle? Who Martin and his team. Alaji Martin and his team. And who was part of his team? Martin uh, Kopundur was there. What's his first name? Uh, no, Ndur, Ndur. But he's late now. He's late now. Sorry. And who else? Um, Senghor, Pa Senghor was there. Then the other personnel, I could not remember. But uh, it was two vehicles. Where is Pa Senghor now, if you remember? Pa Senghor, um, he was uh, with the NIA then before. Now the SIS. So I don't know whether he's still there or moved out. He when did NIA. you last know that he was there? The, when did you last know that he was at the SIS? No, that was before the, the change of um, the SIS. <coughs> Please proceed. Tell us what happened in the vehicle. So we, we, we dropped off. As we went past Denton Bridge, you know, getting to mile two, I saw, you know, the vehicle started turning towards mile two. I personally, I asked him, I said, eh? Uh, Martin, where are we going to? He told me, he, the, the way he responded to me, it was like very harsh. How did he respond? Yes, when I asked him, Martin, where are we going? He said, you know, my friend, stop. Don't talk. <laughs> Just like that. I said, okay. So, what eventually happened? All right. Um, sorry, I, I forgot to mention one person. Among the guys he came with, it was Bach Samba. He was the one who dro drove the vehicle behind. Bach Samba. He was the one who drove the vehicle behind. So that's, he, that's uh, Bach Samba Jalo. Huh? Bach Samba Jalo. Yeah, Bach Samba Jalo. So when he told me, my friend, shut up. You don't ask. So I kept quiet. So we entered in the in the prison yard, and then went to their admin, you know, area. So I saw. And to say they came out, and then they started, you know, discussing Martin and then Antu Sedi. So we were asked to get out of the vehicles. 
So, in fact, when Anta Siri saw me, he said, eh, Sanya, I'm four minutes. Kako, sir, I think I'm fine yet. He said to me, eh, Sanya, what happened? I told him, sir, well, I also saw myself like this. But I remember telling him that, please, if you go, you inform my brother. I told him, please, Nitata, I found my brother. Nina Ketanda. Were you detained? And can you tell us what happened before you Yes. Were now, their conversation, Martin's conversation with um, Antusidi, definitely, then we were in the vehicle. So when we were asked to come back, uh, come out, you know, obviously, uh, a search was conducted, as usual. You know, then that was the time I knew that we were under arrest. So we were processed, you know, the, through their normal way at the prison yard. Then finally, finally, you know, we were escorted to um, into the prison. prison, prison um, Did prison. anything happen between you and Baksan Bajalo? Immediately, for Baksan Bajalo, immediately when we got out of the vehicle, down from the vehicle, then he came and removed his pistol, told Martin, Sir Oga Martin, Ibulange finished. No, sorry, he said it in Olaf. By Magia Kallen. So, like, leave please, me. Please interpret. Yes, he said to Martin, Oga, leave me, let me finish them. You understand? He cocked the pistol. So, it was unto say. What did you understand that to mean? Leave me to finish them. Meaning that he was ready to kill us. So it was Andrew Sedi who intervened by telling him that, telling him that look, but you have to calm down because these people are now under us. They are within the prison yard. So this is how, you know, he calmed down. So finally, finally, we were, you know, taken into custody and uh, we are taken to the uh, confinement, maximum confinement uh, um, um, yard. Was that the maximum security wing? No, maximum wing? security wing, number one. What happened when you got there? Did you see anyone of significance? No. When I went there, when we went there, you know, first I was taken to cell number 12. You know, cell number 12. Then um, Sambo, I think he was in cell number, is it seven? So I was in cell number 12. So that's where we... So immediately when I was in the cells, um, I started wondering what, what, must, what I, must have happened, you know, for me to be arrested. So and in that time also, I never knew that um, Sana and others were also there. Who were Sana and others, please? Can you explain? Captain Sana others, Sabali. Sir? And who were the others? Um, Captain Sana Sabali. Captain uh, Saribu Haidara, you have um, um, Private um, Jakaria Dabo, you have uh, Babu Karinjai, you have Lamin Drame, you have Abdumane, Abdumane, you have um, Usman Sonko. Sorry, Umar, Umar Sonko. He, he was an orderly to, to Haidara. So they were there. So what happened when you got to your cell? Um, because it was late in the evening. Uh, before we, our process was, um, you know, completed. Then finally we got, uh, we saw ourselves in the cells. Then it was um, when I was trying to find out what uh, might have happened to to warrant my arrest. Then I begin to realize that, you know, people were inside, and then all of a sudden, I noticed that Sabali was there, you know, who, in fact, in fact, was quick to tell me that, uh, let me calm down. So I could not understand what happened. Um, Lieutenant, please, um, unfortunately, we are running out of time. And I know that what you're about to say is going to take yes. um, a while. 
I think the particular question yes. I just wish to know now is what Sana Savali told you in terms of why you were being detained. Was he responsible yes. for your what? detention yes. in, at mile two? Yes. In fact, when, when he knew that um, I was injured, he told me that to calm down. Then I find out what happened. So he told me outright that, um, you know, it was when he was arrested and then uh, severely tortured. So they asked him a question as to, you know, the people that normally go to his house, he could remember, you know, mentioning my name, that uh, I once went there, just like that. Uh, can you tell us um, what, what happened after that, after he mentioned that it was during torture that you were mentioned? We don't want you to go into, there's no need to go into details. Um, if we can just move on to your own personal experience, did anything happen to you in particular? Of course. Um, and did you witness anything that happened to either Sana Sabali, Saad Wuhaider, or any other person that was detained with them? So, well, to, to, to I mean, quote a story to sort, I also explained to him, but nonetheless, in two weeks' time, or in a week's time, you know, Sana Sabali was removed from his cells, and then we were told that, you know, he was taken for questioning at the admin block. Then he came back. The next, Hara was second. What was um, Sana Savali's condition or his appearance when he was brought back? No, this was quite, I mean, I think interrogation, not uh, the other one. So, like, they were taken for interrogation and they brought back. But uh, after that, they came and they took Sana Savali. But when he came back, it was a different thing altogether. Then, after that day, they came for Sadi Buhayrara, the same process. Sadi Buhayrara was taken. When he came back, Sadi Buhayrara's condition was more, even worse, than Sana Sabal because he came under support. He could not walk. Then, thereafter, that was the time they came for me. Before we move on to you, just tell us um, what you meant by Sana Sabal's condition and the fact that Saidi Buhaydara's condition was worse. Sana Sabali's condition, in fact, you, you, can, you can see it on him that definitely he was malhandled, meaning that he was being tortured also. What could you see? Because you can see, you know, lacerations and there's also bruises on, on his body. What about Sana Sabali? What no, did you see? Haidara. Sorry, Haidara. What did yes. you see? Yes. Haidara, when he was taken and then brought back, that one is a different story. He came under support by the prison um, officers who were on duty. And definitely, he was, it's like he was saying, mm, mm, as he was coming. Why was he supported? He was weak. And Why? then you can see the body was rough. Why was he moaning or making those noises that you I think it's because of the pain. So thereafter, they came. I was just there in the morning when um, Sergeant Ismaila, I think um, we call him Is, either Sanyang or Sanya, I don't know, he's a prison officer, came and then opened my cell. He said, Sanya, okay, come. I came out. Immediately when I stepped out of my cell, he put my hands on handcuff. I said, eh, what happened? He said, okay, no, we are going somewhere and then come. I said, okay. So we walked through the corridor. Outside the, the cells, as I stepped out of the cells, he put my legs on chains. You know, I, I, cannot, I could not understand. Then he escorted me to uh, number four. You know, number four, uh, maximum this security number four. wing number security, four. Security wing number four. That's where he took me to. So as we were going from a distance, I saw Martin seated with um, some, of this, some of his men. But about some steps before Please I met. Clarify which man, Martin. Alaji Martin. Sanya Alaji Martin. What is his present position now? He is the, um, the, um, the um, Inspector General of the Gambian Forces. Brigadier, uh, Brigadier General Alaji Martin. Please proceed. Some steps before now reach him. In fact, uh, somebody. If I hit. I, 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 I received a, a knock from the back. Then, in fact, I lose balance and then, you know, fell down. I was supported to sit down. Do you know what you were knocked with? 
no, I think it is a blow, sort of. I started wondering how, before you blow me, at least you tell me, uh, maybe, maybe you, you question me, if I refuse to talk, then that's the time to blow me. But uh, anyway, so he started asking me, um, what do I know about Sanapa, Sanasabali? I said, what? He said, what have you been be doing with Sanasabali? Who started asking you? Alaji Martin. Just like this. You mean General Brigadier Alaji Martin? Yes. Martin. yes. You know, just out of blue like that. I said, no, I have not been doing anything with um, Sana Sabali. Just the fact that I went there to, to conduct guard changes. He said, no. We were told that you were, you know, trying to, uh, I mean, carry out an, a coup. I said, who, me? So that was the time he now gave instructions for his men. You know, he said, look, handle him. So this handled him. All of a sudden, I saw a, a, a plastic bag being put on my head and then tied it. You put the plastic bag over The your guy head. behind me. Do you know who he was? No. But two guys that I, in fact, con confirmed, that is Senghor, Pasenghor, and Ndur. Because yes. Pasenghor was on my he left. Give us their full names and ranks, please. Sorry. Pas we know him as Pasenghor. And this Ndur... Where is he now? Ndur is late. What about Pasengwa? Pasengwa is alive. Sorry. Where is he now? I don't know. He's working with uh, either the NS, uh, SIS, SIS or maybe drug squad. I don't know. Is he with SIS? Yes. Pro uh, I think so. Please proceed. You know. He asked them to uh, handle me. I said, what? They put that ba plastic bag on my face, on my head, and then just tied it. Started beating me. Where did they beat you and how? Huh? Where did they beat you and how? At my back, wherever. Just started beating me. Talk, talk. You know. Were they using? Were they using their their hands or any particular instrument? Body, legs, and even the the uh, butt stock. So you know, you can feel, you can exhale, but you cannot inhale. You know. So I was in that uh, struggle, struggle, struggle. So you were being suffocated. Of course. Then they released me. So when they, they released me, he said, look, talk. So Senghor and Ndur were the people telling me that, you know, RSM, you know, just say the truth so that we can release you. I said, what, which kind of truth? What, what, what have I done? You know? So it was at that point that I told Martin, look, uh, why are you, you know, uh, beating me like this? What have I done to warrant this thing? He said, I have to talk. Talk what? He said, Sar Sabal Sana Sabali. I said, no, I don't have anything to do with Sabali. I don't know. He said, okay, well, look, get him. So this time around, when they get me, it was more even worse. Because, you know... Who said, um, get him? It's Alagi Martin. <laughs> All right. What about who was asking you to talk, apart from Alagi Martin? You said someone else was asking you to talk so that they can let you off. This is my Senghor, and then Undur. Please proceed. You know? So the, the same process came in. Put the him back on me, and then just tied the neck. So this time around, when they started beating me, beating me, the same process, I, I, I can exhale, but inhaling becomes a problem. So finally, finally, I got fainted. I could not under, you know, remember what happened and all, along the line. You know, it's like... I, 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 I came black out. Black out. Would you, you know? say that um, Martin was in charge of your torture? Ma, it is a large Martin. It is a large Martin. And you know, it's okay. Please proceed, please. Say whatever it was that you wanted to say. It's all right. You know, this time it got worse. I got fainted. But when I regain energy, it's like I, I, I noticed that I was breathing very fast. It's like when you, you, you run a distance of 300 meters with full speed and then you stop. You know, I was breathing very fast, fast and I became weak. You know, it's, it's, 
you cannot just understand. You know? So look at it. You can just see. Look, my hand, in fact, I, before, I thought maybe this hand will never be correct. This, this is a handcuff. Do you want to um, demonstrate um, to the commissioners or show them where it was that you, the what marks you sustained? Sorry, sorry to remove the... Please, if you can go, go around and show the commissioners, please. How was that sustained on your head? How did you... What were you beaten with? What were you beaten with on your head? You know, sorry. You know, that pro during that process of struggle, you know, I told you I got fainted, became blackout. You know what, some, what it means if you are blackout? If you need they come and then pour petrol on you and then put fire, you don't know. I don't know. But I only saw this mark there. How did you sustain the mark on your um, wrist? Handcuff. I told you when, Im immediately when I was moved from, removed from uh, the cells, this Ismaila put handcuff on my, on my hands. So how did the handcuffs manage to actually injure you? Were they too tight? You know, at the end, the handcuff was so tight on me, I think during the process of that struggling, the thing was so tight on me, you know, you cannot just understand. I mean, so tight, the tight fight. So it actually cut you? Yes. Was anything else done to you? Apart from the suffocation, the beatings, was there anything else that was done to you? Please, like what? Can you tell us? Did you feel any pain at some point? Did you feel something pierce your body? You see, even as that now, I cannot understand what is in my body. When I was released, can I go ahead? Because you said we don't have time. Please, yeah. Before you were released, tell us how it started. Yes. I had pains on, my, on me. And even at my back, I had pains. How did you come to have those pains? Um, did something happen to you when you were being tortured by Martin? Did you feel I feel something like something was rejected? put in my body, so which I don't know. I don't know. Did you feel that something was being injected into yes. your body? I don't know. So what has have the effects of your torture been um, on your life since then? It's definitely um, unimaginable. And then, uh, well, anyway, it has happened. It has happened like that. Have you suffered any health complications as a result? You see my left shoulder going down. Still now. Wahala. That's a problem. Please explain what you mean by wahala. That's a problem. What is the problem? I still have pains. What kind of pains? It's okay. Um... Uh, sharp pains, anyway, sharp pains. And where do you feel those sharp pains? In On what part of your body? On the back. Do you feel them on your chest? What? Do you feel them on your chest also? Yes. Um, have you been to any medical facilities as a result of your... Um, of the, of the symptoms you have actually um, suffered. Thank you. Um, you know, when I was released in um, 2005, sorry, 1995, the first person 
that um, um, tried to enlighten me as to what um, had happened during my dad's vacation was Lamin Boja, Elfran Lamin Boja, now retired General Lamin Boja when he was in the, in the clinic. When I went to him, I explained my story and then told him that <laughs> that was a, in fact, we went to an extent when in fact I got, you know, fainted. And during that process, when I regained my energy, I became new. And then, but then what I realized was I was breathing very fast, like, you know, I ran for about 300 meters. All of a sudden I stopped. I became so weak. He just looked at me and then told me that you are nearly dead. Because if that process has continued, within, in fact, one, one minute or half a minute, you are gone. Well, I became, <laughs> I said, okay, so I nearly got into hell. So I explained my problems and they started, you know, giving me some medications here and there. Uh, and then that's it. But along the line, 1996, I went to Ghana to do my platoon sergeant's course and then minor tactics course. That was in 1996. Take note, I was admitted in 37 hospital in Accra. Why were you admitted? The same problem. Because I can feel, you know, that uh, there was an abnormality in my chest. And, you know, in Ghana, when, we, when I was in Ghana, you know, the training was so tense, you know, and, you know, just, and you cannot, you cannot, you cannot bug out. Were they able to tell you what the reason was? I know. I, I, in fact, I forgot. I could, I could not really request any documents from there. So in 2008, when I went to Nigeria to do my, you know, junior staff course, records are there. I'm always frequent at the college clinic. Have you ever been diagnosed? and told what is wrong with you. I'm coming. So, in 2012, back again in Nigeria to do my senior division course. Same problem. I went to America, Washington, DC, Baltimore, Fairfax Hospital. I went there. They carry out all necessary tests. And the doctor, though they diagnosed it, just at my back here, but he said he noticed something black that I should see a cardiologist. A cardiologist. That one is gone. Did he describe this black material that he found oh, no. in your body? Then I went to Turkey. Turkey. The same. Turkey, I did ECG, ultrasound, X ray, uh, endoscopy. You understand? Sorry, before that, before going to um, Turkey, Dr. Jaita. RBTH, now he's in Kenya, he used to work at um, uh, Medicare, uh, Afrimet, no, not Afrimet, Buffalo. He was the doctor who uh, did this um, uh, echo sound on me. The first time to do echo sound. Because I was advised by the, 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 the doctor in America to see a psycho, uh, cardiologist. I have all records. All these tests that I did, I have the records. I went to Turkey. All these tests were done, and then I have the records. Then, from there, just 2017, I led the platoon here to go and represent the Gambia Armed Forces in the Senegalese um, independence of 2017. You know, I said, look, let me go there. 
I have the documents. In America, when I went, I was given a bill of 1,900 and something, 900, 958 dollars. Did the army pay for it? That is a question. Because when I was given that bill, I said, this one, how can one be struggling with $500? Now you are bringing a bill of um, 1,000 plus. I contacted, I said, look, this one, embassy, take it. But when I came, then I was at a training school. I wrote, first of all, I met the CDS, CDS that is Masane Kinte before. Then from the training school, I wrote and then attached those documents and sent it. Whether the bill was paid or not, that one, I don't know. Are you still undiagnosed as we speak? Do you know what the root of your problem is? Well, right now, I don't, um, I'm not undiagnosed because, I mean, it has taken a long time and whatever, but I have all my documents. Do you still suffer from the same symptoms? Always, sometimes I do feel it. So you have not been treated? No. When did um, your problem start, your medical problems? When did it start? When did you start feeling the pains in your back and your chest? That is immediately when I was released. That is why I met, you know, um, Lamin Boja. That is a uh, former uh, general, ex-general Lamin Boja, when he was in the clinic. Was that just after your torture? Yes. And before you know, when I was released, I was sent back to Yundum to assume my position as an RSM. And before that, you never had any back problems no, or chest problems? No. Would you say that Martin is responsible for your current uh, condition? 159,000 <laughs> percent. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. Um, thank you for your testimony. We'll stop here just to allow Sorry. the commissioners questions Sorry. to ask. Something happened that definitely I really, um, I was not the least happy. Just to cut it short. Just in summary because very we short. have run out of Please, time. Please, very short. Right. I was one time posted um, in Yundum. Posted in Yundum. On the 7th of September 2017, I was transferred from Yudum and posted to the Joint Headquarters under IG's office and then appointed Martin's deputy, somebody who nearly took my life. Now you are now telling me to go and then be telling him, yes, sir, good morning, sir, good morning, sir. Definitely for that, I wasn't happy. First, I laid my complaint, my observation. That is to say, look, sir, this move, it did not go down well with me. The first person that I met was um, Colonel Kausu Sanyang. He told me, well, he himself, he saw it like that, but let me see the deputy. I went to the deputy, um, General Drame, when I sat with him, I explained my ordeal to him. He said, well, you know, this thing is from the serious. But you can take it in good faith. Take it in good faith, what? For me to die under, you know, stress and then, you know, anger? Somebody who nearly took my life and now you are telling me to go and then walk under him? I said, okay, oh, it's well and good, fine. Dakar, when we went on this uh, independence, the CDS, in his um, accommodation, we sat down and then I explained to him, sir, well, this is my problem. All right, so, um, Definitely, it is very, very difficult for me, you know, uh, to work under somebody that, you know, normally, no, nearly took my life as his deputy. So, I, I also, it told me that earlier, well, the government is trying to, you know, do something that is to say, well, this uh, um, commission is coming up and then uh, things, uh, wounds are going to be healed. Is it correct that you're still... Um working under Martin. He is your superior officer in the army. He's superior to you. I, w I have not worked under him, but before I was removed, I decided to take the bull by the horn by myself. 
And when they realized that, okay, things were, I mean, serious, that was the time they said, okay, oh, enough is enough. You go, just move aside. What did you do? I started following up. That is a definite, I cannot work with him. Under the army chain of command, Martin is your superior officer. Very well. That one, in fact, is why, I, in fact, I served there for seven months because I was very disciplined. With you all that uh, problem, I keep saluting him, yes, sir, and then pass. Do you feel under threat currently? Threat? Yes. All what I know is I'm a human being, and I cannot be more than a human being. If there is anybody who is trying, aiming at me, well done. I'll leave the person between him and then God. If I die tomorrow, yes, no problem. The question was, do you feel threatened? I don't feel threatened. Have you ever had an opportunity to, to discuss with, with Martin what happened to you, about what happened to you? Did you ever? You know, <coughs> we've not um, discussed anything concerning that. But when we look into each other's face, <laughs> volumes of, uh, uh, I mean, discussions have been done uh, through our eyes of actions. Has he ever apologized? Nothing. Has he ever shown any remorse for what he has done? Nothing. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. I think we'll end it there and just um, hand over to the commissioners. Mr. Chairman, please. Uh, thank you, Council. Lieutenant Colonel Babakar Sanyo, thank you very much, Emma, for your testimony. And uh, I'm sorry that you had to endure so much over the years. Commissioners, do you have any questions? Yeah, uh, Imam Jalo, you have the floor, please. Mr. Sanyo. Sir. Evidence, you said that uh, when Quebec came to pick you up, Sir? Could you, when Quebec came to call you to go and answer, mm -hmm. you not understand how a junior could instruct a senior officer. Later on, as things developed, you decided to move out of the camp and went back to your house. Why did you come back to service? Thank you, Sir Imam. I decided to leave the barracks based on um, the advice I received from the military police and that is part of their job to ensure that there is safety in the barracks. They always make sure that there is no loss of life. That is the job of the military police. Secondly, when I left, without during the period that I was in Lamen, there was no sign that in fact um, could have think in my um, years that um, there was total disorderliness happening. So everything was quiet. So I feel, okay, since I'm, I'm a soldier, okay, this thing happens like that, then let me go back and then see what happened during my absence and what is happening there. Obviously, I have sent for the CEO to, CEO to be informed. I must go there to see what happened so that I will be able to report to the CEO exactly what happened, if at all he was not there. So this is why I came back. Thank you. Yes, I'm, uh, Commissioner Jones, you have the floor. Commissioner Jones. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, my first question um, is regarding the burial at the Yundum Barracks. Um, what did you say was used to cover the graves or ditches, if you like? What was used to cover it or cover them? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that the ditches were dug much earlier than that day. So where did the sand that they used to cover the ditches come from, if you know? 
obviously during the process of um, that um, very obviously they use shovels and then uh, pickaxes. So it is the sand that they gathered within and then be dumped inside. Okay, thank you. Um, how long were you detained for, and um, did your family know where you were at the time? Six months. Six months, thank yes. you. And uh, second is, uh, uh, Ma, um, yes, my family was informed, because um, that very day we were arrested, um, I told um, Antu Sedi to inform my brother that this is what happened to me. Did they have access to you, to visit you? Uh, no. I was never visited, but when I informed Antu Sedi to inform my brother that this is what has happened to me, I think the following day I received some provisions. Um, what I received was like, um, I think a towel, um, toothpaste, soaps, I think a pair of slippers. I, anyway, I received from, some provisions. Uh, thank you. Commissioner Carr, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman. Just a follow-up question to one of the issues raised by uh, Commissioner Jones. Um, how did your detention affect your family? You see, um, definitely um, it has affected the, the family in a sense. One, um, I was the breadwinner on daily basis now that I was not there and then secondly the circumstances that led to my arrest and detention was never made clear to them and you know what have I done you know no, actually nothing and secondly too they don't have access to me since I was detained until release you know nobody had ever visited me there Thank you. My second question is regarding the food. We've had um, various witnesses tell us the, the quality of food. Um, where you served food while in detention, and what was the food like? You know, to be quite frank with you, um, prison diet, it is only um, for the sake of sustenance that you take it. But if you, look, if you want to consider on the quality, you will die. There is this um, slogan in prisons, when they are serving meals, especially in the evening, wet or dry. Do you like it wet or do you like it dry? Wet or dry is like, um, they will bring the You know, if you want to, for them to put sauce there, you tell them then they'll make it wet. If you want it dry, you tell them they'll bring it raw. So why we always go in for dry, it is like, it is a chance of um, you proce reprocessing it properly to, you know, meet your taste. That is one, you can, you know, have a chance of washing it properly and then also Maybe you may have some tins of milk or sugar or whatever here and there, then you can apply it. But when it comes as wet, the scent of uh, the, the bonga fish that they will put on that uh, food, if you, are, if you don't be careful, by the time you open the, 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 the plate of the food, you'll vomit first because of the scent. Because the bonga fish, Gambians, you know, if you don't cook it well, prepare it well and then cook it well, the odor is always not pleasant. I think, I believe I, you understand what I'm trying to explain here. So this is the situation. Sometimes they are put, you know, so that, you know, definitely you will prefer eating only the, 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 the chere without touching the fish. Without touching the fish. Oh, most of us, we prefer the dry than the wet. So when it comes to eating sauce or maybe food, uh, very, very five percent delicious, it is uh, when maybe probably there is an occasion 
because when we were there 18 February, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, 22nd July of uh, that year, uh, we started eating meat, one piece each. So that one is part of congratulation for having a piece of meat on your food, and then at least you taste, you know, the the meat for the first time. Then thereafter, um, maybe Christmas, also you will be given some, you know, you know different diets. But actually, the the diet was uh, very poor, very very poor. Uh, the final question: um, What did you sleep on? Um, what was the bedding like? For me, cell number twelve was my um, cell. In fact, I later knew that uh, it was uh, later um, a cell that was also allocated to one. I, I, the name was the name was um, familiar. That is, is it Papi Chairs and Sec? Because if you entered there, just on top there, he wrote his name there. One, it is a plank that you'll be given. The very first day that we went, it, is, it was a plank that um, you'll be given, a wooden plank, then with one blanket. Then you have your, your tin for toiletry, and then you have your bottle where you put your uh, water. So the cell is like, for us who at all, is a problem. If you cannot sleep whilst your legs are bent, then you will never sleep in mile two. So for some of us, I cannot remember stretching and then sleep comfortably. So as time goes on, we become used to it. You know, that you don't think about stretching your legs, you bend them and then you sleep. But actually, now it went to a time when the ICRC visited us. I can fully remember. And then the guy who you know, interviewed me was called uh, Mr. Hans. I think he's a German. So when he came, when they visited us, you know, at least things got changed. We have, um, they provided um, a radio set In the, in, the, in the cells, but um, news time, blackout, they'll off it. Then we were provided with um, newspapers, two months old newspapers. They bring them, they, they were brought. Then with um, uh, novels, the ancient novels were brought, those ones were the, the team provided. And then along the line also, San Concilla, uh, may his soul in peace also contributed um, in by providing new you know toiletry pots and then uh, pots and then soaps you know through the intervention of um, the ICRC so things got improved a little bit but uh, the diet remains as it was thank you Chiama thank you, thank you Bishop um, uh, Odiko you have the floor thank you Chairman um, Lieutenant Colonel Sanyang, mm. who performed the burial ceremonies at the burial of all those soldiers who were shot down, the officers who were shot down. You mean at the firing site or the burial? The burial site at Yundum Barracks the burial ceremonies. As far as I know, um, there was no formal uh, burial ceremony being performed for these um, gallant soldiers, so gallant officers. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That is my question. 
Abaraka, um, Imam. So, Imam, what you said is uh, what happened? In my uh, statement, I have been speaking about Basiro Kamara. But uh, if you see, I didn't call his name. I have not seen his cops. And Maji ya ya ibabade la watermen. And I did not see when he was being buried. Just ya phone you drunk. I just told coming like Basiru Baro that Basiru Baro was killed. And abimotole kono. And he was in a vehicle. So nting atale ko. So I took it. Uh, no moto minje. But the vehicle that I saw parked. Uh, okay, came back into the camp. Think, yeah. I didn't see him. Well, I didn't know about him. Ma, 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 ma that is why I did not speak about him. Uh, thank you very much. If there are no further uh, questions, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, do you have any concluding remarks to make? Yes, sir. Thank you, Imam. About the burial, just as I said earlier on, the ditches uh, they were not uh, the size of this table. Uh, they were big ditches. Alright, if, uh, if I said they were big ditches, um, EMC sir, Basiru Kamara. They were better than then. Uh, subsequently, they killed EMC uh, and Basiru Kamara. But uh, still now, guy, uh, when they are full for funonu, it could be that uh, they would be buried in there. New level, Pabi. And then the 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 ditches will be leveled. The so far, can I then call level level? What have they? If they they level it level it in a proper way. But more than that, you have team for no do what have they? It could be that uh, when you come there, you wouldn't know that uh, there was a, a burial uh, done there. So no, so, so that so is uh, what it is. Face. So if I say it was filled, ne, um, it is not um, that. Uh, nyo, nyo uh, it was because as a result of the cops that we were being buried there. Wow. So legi, So um, tape time bobo, at the time. Why guy bunjon bunyu rayon guy nyom basir kamara EMC. When basir kamara and EMC were being killed. Um, thank you, sir. Um, thank you, sir. The chairman of the. Um, Commission. The commissioners are here present. Um, the lead council and um, your able um, assistants. Um, the secretary and then the deputy secretary to the um, commission. Members of the press here present. And um, ladies and gentlemen. And the um, nation. So, first of all, I would like to profoundly my sincere thanks and an appreciation to the government of the Gambia for the establishment of um, this TRRC. It is a historic moment in this um, country, and, and the TRRC has revealed and brought closer to the population, the dark years of the Machiavellian leadership styled on Lash, either directly or indirectly on all Gambians. The new Gambia have put um, to rest the sustained climate of fear, uncertainty, and the unpredictable risks associated with um, taking events the most basic decision in one's line of duty. What happened to the Gambians, either by design or default, is too deep a wound that we won't forget in a hurry event if we choose to forgive and move on. However, I would like to crave the, indul uh, the indulgence of all Gambians, not allow the <clears throat> pains of the past to deter us from the sweet embrace of the future. My belief and conviction 
that uh, the Gambia can emerge from the revelation of such unthinkable um, cruelty remain undiminished. Mr. Chairman, I have won. I have spent most of my life in the military, like many others. Looking back at my army career, I thank God for all the things that I have done right. In the same vein, I would like to also say sorry for the things that I have, my, I have, my, I have might done wrongly on uh, knowing. The military profession is one key institution that makes so that um, its members are tried, tested, trusted with undertakings that have fatal consequences. Doing a job that puts you to such limits sometimes makes one vulnerable in many ways. Furthermore, Exposure to, exposure to a tense and violent environment, even for a short period of time, could make the best trained officer culpable. This is by no means an attempt to right the wrongs of some bad elements of the Gambia Armed Forces. But a glimpse of um, some of the unpredictable circumstances that your brothers sisters, fathers, uncles, etc., in arms, confront almost on a daily basis whilst on operation. Mr. Chairman, the key factor for this controlness in the security services is undue civilians' influence. This is different from civilians' control of the security services, which we fully embrace and subscribe to. There should be a directorate of um, career planning at the defense headquarters and a permanent well-constituted commission board established. This puts officers and soldiers on a career, plot, a career path which shall be the benchmark for the commission but to avoid prejudice and order on professional tendencies or inclinations. The Gambia, Armed Force, the, Gambia, the Gambia Armed Forces Council has captured by section 187, subsection 1 in brackets, is yet to be established. This is different from the National Security Council, which is in existence. Lastly, government should seriously look into the terms and conditions of service for officers and soldiers. This document is, critically, is critical for the welfare of our personnel and is still being under review. And we still ad um, don't know when it is going to be endorsed for full implementation. I thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to give some remarks, and I hope that um, at the end of the day, Gambians will learn lessons from this truth commission and then use it to reconcile and uni un unify our people so that the never again slogan will be attained. Mr. Chairman, on that note, um, I thank you very much thank the members of your um, able staff, the lead council, the secretary, and the members of the press who are covering these um, proceedings. On that note, I thank you very much for your kind attention, sir. Thank you very much indeed uh, for those uh, concluding remarks. This brings us um, to the end of our proceedings summer um, for today and uh, for the week as well. Uh, Council, are we lined up um, uh, for witnesses um, uh, on Monday before we break up? Yes, indeed, we are lined up, Mr. Mr. Chairman. We can start on Monday morning at 10.
splendid. We um, uh, would then end the day today and uh, you have a, a wonderful and restful weekend. See you all Monday morning, 10 o'clock sharp. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned. Assalamu alaikum badingolum bali konto na kali bismillahi katenteng futandi roma mi yalonko wolem yele mandi roti kuma kan mi yalonko wolel sotota bi longa la commission la carola kabrentu mala mena lieutenant colonel am mi yalonko wolem babukar sanyande anu nyen karobe kala watu menna waya taray ka fay rsm babukar sanyang eh kol me yalonko wolle sotota november 11 la carola dron attendenda ka 50 roke wolla siola wuche sabanjan kono damento yalonko wolle bitilo nyin kumfa attendenda te rsm sanyang kaitande ko de atada dinkra do damialonko wolla mala officioti akokabira futata woto e atarta jeya mamme ba 